Hi, I'm Chris Allen, and welcome to another EHC Tech Tip. In this video, we're going to be looking at a no power situation on the Fusion Comet boiler caused by a tripped WT3 high limit thermostat. Our first port of call would be to reset the thermostat by using a screwdriver and pushing in the brass pin in the centre of the unit until the system relatches. The power will then come back onto the boiler and we now need to fault find to find out why this has happened. Our first port of call would be has there been a power cut or a power interruption to the boiler while it was operating. Due to latent heat and the power going off, this can cause a rise in temperature within the heat exchanger and naturally trip out the high limit thermostat. After this point, we then look at the system itself. Air in the system. So we want to go around and bleed all the radiators as large portions of air entering the boiler can also create an overheat situation which will trip out the thermostat. Once these two points have been covered, we then need to look at the internals of the boiler. If the thermostat has been tripping occasionally every couple of months of that, it is most likely due to a power disruption or air within the system or lack of flow rate, going back to cleaning out filters etc. Where the tripping is persistent and daily or multiple times per day, we then want to look at the boiler itself, closely to the power board which controls the elements and the elements itself. The power board has triacs which control the element switching on and off. If any of these fail, this can then cause an element to power up when it's not supposed to, meaning we have a, an overheat situation. This circuit board is easily tested with the use of a multimeter or of digital voltage tester. Another issue would be a failed element within the heat exchanger where it is a shot to earth. However, the resistance is high enough that it is not going to take out the breaker. For this purpose, we then look to do an insulation resistance test on the terminals of the power board through to the elements themselves. Now we will look at testing of the power board. If the WT3 has been tripping daily or repeatedly, then it is most likely that there could be a fault with the triac which switches the element. When the boiler is in an off state, there is still power leaking through the triac to an element which will then naturally cause an overheat situation. To test the circuit board, this is simply done with the use of a multimeter or digital voltage tester. On the circuit board, we have seven terminals. One through to seven, seven being the neutral. First of all, we want to turn off the boiler display panel. This will ensure there is no call to heat through the electronics but we are keeping the main external power on. Taking our test probes, we want to keep one probe on terminal number 7 being neutral and on the other we then want to test number 2 which is the outgoing terminal to the element and at this point we should have zero volts. We now want to move on to terminal number 4 and again we should have zero volts. Finally, we want to test terminal number 6, and again, we should have 0 volts. Should there be any voltage from 0 through to 230 on any one of those terminals, terminal 2, 4 or 6, this would show that, that one of the triac switching terminals has failed in the circuit board, and we need to replace this circuit board. Let's now look at testing of the heat exchanger for element failure. Once the power board has been tested and we have confirmed that all triacs are operating healthy, another scenario could be element failure where voltage within the heat exchanger is leaking from the element through to earth. If a high enough resistance is established, the breaker at the fuse board will not trip. However, this is one of the main importances why we recommend the utilisation of RCDs. To test the elements, we simply want to use an insulation resistance tester set to 250 volts and attach your air lead to the air stud of the heat exchanger. Next, we move back to the power board which we previously tested. This time using insulation resistance, we want to retest terminal number two to earth and we should see a full clear system. So depending on your meter, this will be greater than 999 or greater than 200 meg ohms. We then want to move on and carry out the same test on terminal 4 and finally on to terminal 6. 
Should we get a low reading or a dead shot, this will symbolise that an element is down to earth and the heat exchanger itself requires to be replaced. So once we've tested the power board and the elements within the heat exchanger, if the power board has any leaking voltage or the element has any shorts uh, to earth, then we require to replace the respective component. When changing these two components, both uh, components are changed in a similar fashion. First of all, the element cables need to be disconnected from the power board, and if it's the power board that's requiring replacement, this is then detached from the pipework through via the three screws at the front. The new power board is then mounted in reverse and the elements reconnected, which we'll go into in more detail in a moment. If the heat exchanger requires to be replaced, again, we need to remove the connections from the power board and then remove the heat exchanger itself by undoing the two pipe connections, top and bottom. Once we refit the heat exchanger in reverse, we then need to reconnect the elements to the power board in more detail. Okay, so now that we've replaced the correct component, be it the power board or the heat exchanger, we now need to reconnect all the element cables and power wires in the correct sequence. First of all, let's put on the main incoming power supplies. First of all, let's take the power cables which come down from the WT3 at the top of the boiler. One of these cables should be on to terminal number one. Our second cable should be on to terminal number three. And our third cable will be on to terminal number five. Now for the heat exchanger cables. The heat exchanger element cables, there are six off on most single phase boilers. Six cables for three elements. So first of all, we need to use our continuity tester and find our pairs. So simply by picking two cables and checking for continuity across, we now know our first live and our first neutral. Our first one then goes on to terminal number two and the opposite end sat to the side to attach to our main neutral terminal. Again, bring through your other cables, starting with your first one. Again, find the opposite end of that element and attach this one to terminal number four. Lastly, we need to find our final element by testing the remaining cables. One of these pairs now goes on to terminal number six, like so, meaning we are now left with three returns, one from each element being our neutrals. These can then be connected to number seven along with the main neutral cable. Now that all the cables are reconnected to the stud, Finally, tighten the cables accordingly, but be careful not to over tighten. Finally, we want to mount the insulated shield. The boiler is now ready to power back up and carry on and reheat the system.